So I'm working on a jazzy power chair. And a lot of these have issues with uh, powering up. And this one's no exception. It has a full charge, a fully charged uh, set of batteries, but the button is not responsive. But every now and then it will power up, like you can see. But it uh, is not responsive to the button. So the way to disconnect the uh, controller here is uh, you follow the cable along and it goes down into the main controller and it has a little release here. You push that little tab in and pull it. And there's a four pin connector that disconnects. And then if you raise the arm up, there's a uh, screw here, Allen screw. And that's used to tighten down this rod. And in my case, uh, there's two Phillips screws. What I'm gonna do is just remove these Phillips screws and leave the rod in place because I need to get that out of the way anyway. I've got the joystick assembly here on the bench. I'm gonna be taking it apart. It has a, uh, it's a Torx uh, T10 is the fasteners that they're using. And I found two here and one here. I'm not sure what's under here, but I'm not gonna pull that out yet. I'm gonna see if these two get it. Now there's the plastic thread I was talking about. Hopefully you won't be going into this very much. And you have to be careful when you put the screws back in not to strip them out because it's just going into soft plastic. And there's one here. That one feels like it might be stripped a little bit. Then I can remove the cover here. So there's a little four pin connection. I could just remove that, pull it straight away, and uh, that gets that out of the way. That's the charging port there, or the programming port. So this is the part I'm interested in working on. So I'm just studying it to see how it uh, is retained in there. I see the PC board looks like it slides in under here. And then there's a connection here. That's for the joystick. I'll disconnect it there, it seems. Geometer there. So you can see uh, there's an E clip in there that retains the um, the knob. So there's no no amount of prying is going to get that knob out of there. You can see that E clip on it. So I'm glad I didn't try to work on that aspect of it. And right here are the two uh, buttons. The uh, this one here is the power on off, and this one here is the horn button. And uh, this is the horn right there. And if you look underneath here, these are the uh, the two arrays of the sensors that when you short these out, that uh, completes the path and causes it to turn on or off or blows the horn. So. In this case, I'm going to clean these contacts and clean the switch contacts with some contact cleaner.
right here. I've got some contact cleaner, but I'm not going to spray it on the actual device. I'm going to spray it into a cup and use a swab to clean the uh, switches. And um, looks like there was a little bit of contamination on the switch. I'm not sure what got in there, but um, I'm going to clean that and let it dry. And I had this uh, refurbishing kit that I was going to use on the. Um, the membrane switches, but I believe the membrane switches were okay. They don't appear to be damaged or anything. They just seemed a little dirty. So I'm not going to paint anything on there. I'm just going to let the contact cleaner dissolve. Uh, I might try one more time to clean it before I put it back together and test it. So after cleaning the contacts and the, and the switch pads here, I decided not to apply any extra conditioner at this time. I think I think it's going to be fine. It just needed to be cleaned. So I'm going to assemble it. It drops in and slides into place. And then the connector here just clicks in there for the, for the joystick. And the potentiometer for the speed control goes in. Of course, you'll have to Rotate the knob to get the alignment, get it to align. Once it does, it will click right into place, just like that. And then we just need to um, connect the back here. Just pushing this connector back into place. Like that. And then we will install the three screws. These are the Torx tins. Now it's ready to go back on the machine and we'll see if it works. Now I'm going to install the controller back on this mount here. Again, this is a number two Phillips driver here. I can plug it in and see if it's going to work now. Okay. Yeah, very quick uh, response there. That's what the issue was. The uh,
course, it's blinking because I don't have the uh, gears engaged. I've got it on uh, so you can be rolled around. But if I were to put the levers up here, now it's ready to go, see? So there you go, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that was uh, helpful. Uh, you can also buy new membrane switch pads and install them if yours is uh, worn beyond uh, repair or, or cleaning. But uh, hopefully you'll have the same luck I did where you can just clean it and go back to uh, having it function. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video.